Welcome, in this video I'm going to do a small overview of all the uh, audio over CAT567 solutions I've been building along with my friend Gusti. Some of those have already been featured in another video and some of them will be in upcoming videos. Uh, I'll put links on all the videos in the comments and also over the video as I mentioned them. If you're new on my channel, my name is Árni and I'm a professional audio engineer living in Akureyri, Iceland. I also play bass in a pub cover band and I've been working on solutions in making our setup easier and simpler to use. I've been sharing some of those ideas here on YouTube. So I've built a few different homemade solutions for doing audio over cat cables. The first thing was my bass pedal board. The concept is to do an instrument line, vocal mic and stereo in-ears over one cat cable. The band plays and rehearses with in-ears, so the setup needs to be quick and easy enough so that every member of the band can set it up so half of the rehearsals and setup time doesn't just go into setting up. Here is my bass pedal board. Uh, I made another one just like this for my guitar player the other day and I did make the whole build available on YouTube which should be up here. So as I have shown in a previous video this connects to a ring rack with uh, one shielded cat cable and also power con for, for the power. Before I built the wing rack I did make a breakout cable for the pedal board to be able to use it with any system. This is version 1, this is a 3D printed box which has the uh, Neutric Ethercon connector and I just bought two 3 meter XLR cables and cut them in half and put them in here. Uh, I'm going to open this up and show you how the inside looks. So on the inside here we have the same Ethercon connector that, that is used in the other parts of our build. Uh, there's a zip tie here and there's actually a slot in the print which the zip ties goes around to clamp the cable and then the cable also gets clamped a bit here by the plastic. This is impossible to close with one hand. There we are. Then this is just screwed together shut. The main reason I decided to use a 3D printed box is because all of the boxes I have seen uh, that are pre-made are huge. Uh, I have some of the uh, cat snake from SS Snake, which is the Tommen brand, and it's ridiculously big. Uh, I don't have it here, but I'll put a picture. You can see how awfully big it is. Now my friend Gusti also found the Seatronic uh, female cable connector, which is this thing, and he built this. So this is a female Ethicon connector, which goes into four XLRs. And this is just snake skin and it's heat shrink wrap and everything. So this will connect directly to the cable. Let me show you. So. So as you can see, this looks very neat. I haven't actually made these myself yet. He said they were very easy to make and I'll definitely make some adapters and make a video on it uh, if you're interested. As I said before, these adapters allow me to use my pedal board standalone without having my whole setup. So if I would be playing with other people, I could still just bring this, bring one cable and the pedal board and I would be ready to go in whatever setup with my wired in-ears microphone and everything. So after I built the wing rack, I had my pedal board ready, but the other players, they hadn't made their minds up yet about the setup. So I made a temporary solution to do the same thing as my pedal board does, which is this. So this is essentially the same thing that's on my pedal board. It's a foot switch, it's a MA400, and it's the HX stomp. But this is the part we're interested in. So. This is just a small 3D printed uh, breakout box, which has an Ethicon in and a mic in. And then on the other side, it has these two flat cables coming out. One of them goes into the IEM and the other one goes into the output of the stomp. And I'm going to open this box up and show you a bit uh, what's on the inside. So that's the inside of the box, it's the same Ethicon connector as before, just an XLR, a short patch cable going in between, and then this is wired uh, according to my wiring scheme which I've explained before. 
And this box actually has uh, three outlet holes, depending on how I want to route the cables. And I can always make the cables the length I want them. So this is very nice temporary solution. It just velcros onto the pedal board, and, and this allows them to implement into my setup without building a whole pedal board. In a previous video, I did also make a box, which is just two in, two out, which I made for a show from parts I had lying around. I don't have that box at home now, but uh, I can link to the video up there, and you can see how that looks. And I also put a put photo, let's, let's try this. If I put a photo of the box here, does that work? Before everyone had their pedal boards and MA400 set up, uh, the band had a six channel PreSonus HP60. Uh, the PreSonus has two balanced stereo inputs called A and B, and then it also has an external in for each output. Uh, wiring this up for show took ages and required some pro proprietary cables because we had we were six, seven, eight people playing. So it took a lot of cabling and it took a long time to set up. I decided to build a solution for that which uses uh, audio over cat cables to connect everything and then I could just leave the tails in the back of the desk. So when we arrived to the show we just needed to plug the two ethernet cables and power to the six channel headphone amp. So that's that. I also just built this wooden box from uh, leftover wood I had. So, so that's the front and that's the back. I uh, don't know how well you can see this. It is quite heavy, both the wooden box and also the insides. I'll just put a stock photo of how the back of this thing looks. It has lots of jack input, some of them are balanced and some of them are unbalanced. And all the mixers we had had uh, XLR output, so there were lots of converters and mono to stereo balance to unbalanced converters going on in the setup. So I'm not really going to show you in this video the detailed wiring of this thing, I'm just going to show you that it exists. For this thing I also built uh, custom adapters. So this is what I called A, which is channel A and B. So this is balanced stereo inputs. It's labeled... Well, Grab my phone. This is just labeled input B right, input A left. Yeah, yeah, you get the picture. So that's the balanced inputs. So now this one, this one's a bit more fun. This is eight channels over one cat cable. So this is four unbalanced stereo. And this is connected to the external in for channels three to six. So as you can see here, that's ch channel. So it also is both has numbers and channel ID. So it has numbers one to eight, and then it also has the channel name. So these two adapters would go on the back of the desk and then just two cat cables running from these to the uh, headphone rack. And uh, this is maybe n not the most ideal solution, but this worked for us. Uh, I will do a detailed video on this setup where I will open the box and show you how it's wired. And that's on my list and I'll get around to that at some point. We would usually have this just in front of the drum kit and then we would run extensions from each output to each player. Uh, in my experience, uh, mini jack headphone extensions are a piece of crap. So we would usually use some of these. We would use we would usually use a TRS to XLR, and then we would extend with an XLR cables because XLR cables we had them around and they can be extended by themselves. That would bring it back to TRS using these sorts of adapters. And for the guitar players, we would then plug the uh, combo instrument inner cables, which I've shown before, into this here. And sometimes we would use these. Uh, these are essentially the same as... No, wait. Wrong, wrong push. These are essentially the same as these, but they just... Uh, they will move the strain of the cable so you don't have your headphone cables straining the thing. I just feel this is a bit better. So in addition to everything I've spoken about, 
I also have the wing racks itself and there is a whole video about that uh, I have gotten a lot of questions about that wing rack and I will do a follow-up, a part two, where I go more into details on how it's wired and I'll take the rack out and show you the inside of the rack. I just need to find time to do that. We're playing a show next weekend and I'll probably bring the rack home after that so I might be able to do that video. So that's a short intro of what I've been building in regards to audio over cat. Uh, which was not supposed to be the theme of my channel, but it has gotten like that because people seem to be very interested in the topic and I also uh, I like giving people ideas that they can use. Uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, accusations, comments, just put them in the comment section, I'll, I'll reply. Uh, you can always try to contact me on Instagram or Facebook or whatever if you have any direct questions, I'm more than happy to reply. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends, like the video, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.